Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Ryan Peach. What's going on, brother? Oh, man, it's so good. It's so good. I, I have a fun story to tell you about my adventure today, and I'm excited to share it with you guys. Uh, it involves me uh, putting myself in a place of just getting punished for an hour. So it's fantastic. I'm excited to tell you guys about that. Uh, but doing great, doing really, really great. What about you? Doing fantastic. Looking forward to your s and story um, as we go into this podcast and hearing about you punished. It's a, it's a twist for us here at The Powerful Man, but I'm open right. to it. I'm really hoping to take us around a corner and uh, really show you, really show you the darker side of things. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been an interesting and wonderful day. Well, hit us with that story. You can't leave us hanging there with an open oh, loop. Okay. All right. So uh, I have a friend and I mentioned to him that, uh, you know, obviously in, in my work and trying to always live a better and better life. I said, you know, my, my, my hips are getting tight in my old age. You know, uh, the, the ripe age of 36, things are starting to, starting to need a little more, a little more uh, grease around the, around the wheels. So um, he was like, cool, come by. He's a, he's a physical therapist and he really is uh, moving into functional medicine. Love it. So I go by his house and he goes, you know, runs me through some different exercises and different things. And okay, great. I think I have a thing for you. Uh, we're going to try some dry needling today. I was like, great. What's that? And this guy <laughs> just per per proceeds to have me lay on my stomach and starts sticking like needles into my body in the places where it hurts the most. Yep. And he gets them in there and they, like my body is involuntarily twitching and doing weird things. And then I was like, great, this is it. We're there. Like we've, we've, we've landed, you know, the needles are in, it feels strange, but it's, it's feeling better. He goes, okay, now you might feel this. And then he begins to twist them while they're in my body. And it was like, borderline convulsions for me just like <laughs> shaking yeah. it's like that's good that's good i picture you flipping around like flopping around like a fish out of water exactly that's exactly what it was like and thank god he was a friend so i didn't have to pay him for this um because i don't like paying for my punishment i usually like to get that for free so, uh, so uh, i'm gonna be in the store for two two or three days Great story. So for the one or two guys that are still with us on this show, <laughs> that are still listening in, uh, what were we talking about today? So I thought it would be a really great idea to talk about what it is to be or what it is that makes up a great leader, um, primarily in business, but also at home. Fantastic. Fantastic. So kick it off. What do you, how do you define a great leader? I guess is the first question. For me, the way I define a great leader is a person who obviously is out in front, right? But they, but they are a person who is drawing their team to where they're going. Um, they're, they're not, they're not having to pull them and, and push and, and convince it's through their actions and through the way that they communicate with their team. People are so excited to catch up with where that leader is. Um, and so to me, that's what I think a great leader is. Well, thank you very much. Um, and then, no, what, not tell me what an actual great leader is. <laughs> yeah. No, it, what it is, what it is, is like what I would call attraction leadership. Was what you're talking about is where you have the leader. You know, in business, you see this. Uh, it's easy to delegate and tell people what you do, and almost have a Machiavellian style where it's rather to be feared than loved type of atmosphere. But you know, when you look at great leaders, they're not always out in front you know, so to speak in the front of the view of the public. Right. But cause they're not, they're not there to take accolades. They're there to inspire through action with their communication and the other things that they're doing. And people, go, they want to step up and step into their greatness um, within their job role or whatever else it may be. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like the leaders from what I've seen, uh, they, they are living it out right? Whatever, whatever that it is for the company, they embody that to the fullest. And so again, it's, it's like you said, it's, it's attraction, right? Like I'm a part of this organization, this movement, this idea, and here's this person who is out in, you know, out in front of the company, maybe not out in front of the public, but out in front of our company 
and they are really living it out. They're not asking me to do anything that they're not already trying to do in their own life. And they're able to help guide me towards that place to be the best part in the company that, uh, that we're growing. Yep, absolutely. So let's talk about what that looks like in a few styles. There's obviously a lot of styles to leadership, but you know, if you're cool with it, we'll call this attraction leadership. Let's do uh, it. And, uh, and how the men listening to this can do this, not only in their business, but this leadership, like you're talking about, applies to your home life, right? You and I, before we hit record, we were talking about kids. Uh, it, it, any guy here has got kids knows exactly, like, you know, trying to be the leader in your house, kids don't always cooperate. Um, but you, you live by example, right? Your kids are just basically tape recorders and they, they, they're watching you and they're living out their, your mannerisms, your words, and your actions, the way that you interact with your partner, right? They're watching all of this, even when you think they're not looking. So how do you become an attraction leader, Ryan? So for me, and, and this may seem obvious to some of these really, really smart guys that we have listening, but it starts with you. Um, I think that you have to take a really great inventory of yourself. Um, oftentimes, it's really great to have really smart people around you that will give you more honest feedback about what they see. Um, but I think that that starts with, okay, I need to understand where I am succeeding and where I'm failing, um, both just individually and as a leader. Um, and so again, there's there's assessments you can take. There's there's um, I like to surround myself with really smart people and have them ask me really difficult questions. Um, but I think that it really begins with getting really clear on where your strengths are and where improvements need to happen or where you just need to be okay not being great and hire greatness in that place. I love it. So I love what you're saying there. And I'll take it, uh, in my opinion, go back one step if I can. And the way it worked for me, the way I've worked on this, and I'm, as you know, and everybody listening that's ever met me knows, I'm the biggest work in progress there is, um, you know, that's out there. But almost, I think you almost want to have an archetype that you're trying to follow, right? So before you can figure out your shortcomings, so to speak, you need to figure out where you're trying to hit, right? What What is the, the metric or the level that you're trying to hit now, um, you know? there's different people that come up. Maybe it's somebody that's already exists. You know, you hear Steve Jobs name thrown around a lot as, you know, a great leader of a company, not a great leader of people, right? That you hear about what he does. And you have Richard Branson, right? Who's out public facing. Now, these people are out in front, but maybe you have somebody in your own life that has exemplified a great leader, a coach, uh, a teacher previously that you followed um, or another man. Maybe it's Ryan Peach, who's also, you know, happens to be a great leader uh, in himself. And then establish that archetype. And movies are a great way to do this, by the way, guys, because those are archetypes that are they're really well defined already. And then you can look at your shortcomings, as Ryan is saying, uh, and see where you're falling short of that archetype of a personality that you want to be. And again, this could be business, could be your personal life. You know, who's the dad that you wanna you wanna be like, right? Who's the husband you wanna be? Um, and look at those areas and where are you falling short? You know, geez, I'm. I'm I'm arguing with my wife or I'm not home cutting the grass on Saturday and and Ryan I talked to to Mark who's one of our coaches uh and he had a great story I was talking to him just before this um and he had a great story about how you know sometimes he'll just get up and do something he knows his wife wants him to do without being asked because that is an example you know he's leading within his family's leading within his relationship Yes. And I love that. I, I had a conversation with uh, a friend of mine this morning. Uh, we were down at the beach and we were just talking back and forth, honestly, about leadership. He runs his own company and we were just having this back and forth. And he, I, he ended up asking me more about what we do at The Powerful Man. And it, the conversation turned to doing things out of out of love, out of, outside of, uh, instead of expectation. Uh, and, and I said, you know, for me in the past, the way that I was coming into doing dishes, laundry, back rubs, taking the kids out was all with some sort of covert contract, right. That I had made that I'm going to do this nice thing. And then I'm going to get X, Y, Z at the end, right. Sex, 
uh, appreciation. Uh, I'm going to get a night out on the town, whatever that thing was. And of course, none of this is shared with my wife. Um, and then what happens, right? She doesn't know about it. So she doesn't say anything about it. So then I'm just more frustrated and more frustrated. And so then I finally blurted out at the end, right? Well, do we not have sex tonight or not? You know, are we, are we going to have sex? And like, no, it's super unattractive, you know, to, to come on to me that way, Ryan. No, we won't. And so then now, exactly, exactly like Mark said, is it, it comes from a place of, I know that this matters to her. She doesn't need to tell me or ask me to do it. I'm going to do it because I love her. And that's the result that I want is I want her to feel loved. I want her to feel respected and valued. And then everything else that comes after that is great. And we see that in business as well, where my dad used to talk about this all the time, where, you know, you can never, you can never get good help anymore, right? That's been the age old story of, of business owners and entrepreneurs for as long as I, I have worked with them, right? It's always, uh, you can never find good help anymore. And what you see is that these people, uh, men have hired people to come and work on their team and they've been given really no idea of what their expectation is um, and what the culture is like, how we do things around here. They're kind of thrown to the wolves. And when they just make that work for themselves, whether that's showing up five minutes late to work, whether that is lying to you so they can get off work early and still get their paycheck, if whatever that ends up being, the leader in my in my case was my was my dad he would just say these guys are always trying to get one over on me and i'm like well okay or you've not accurately created a path for them to know what success and failure looks like in your business and you've come at it from a place of ex you know covert contracts and expectations yeah well, that's a well said and in my experience, Ryan, a lot of the complaints, I hear that complaint from business leaders all the time. Uh, and it comes, it comes out differently. One over on me, can't find good help, they're lazy, what have you. Um, and oftentimes there's a theory in psychology called mirroring, right? Where the complaints you have about others are things that you're actually doing or worries that you may do yourself. Yes. And we look at this idea of being the attractive leader, the attraction leader that pulls people in. Uh, it reminds me of a story when I was hearing you talk about a leader and, you know, here's a boss who, who wasn't very outgoing, very introverted and what have you. And he shows up to the office, right? It was a remote office and there's piles of boxes lying around, you know, in the office of clearly that, you know, the administrative staff just hadn't taken care of, right? And, you know, everybody sits down to the meeting, they have a meeting, you're talking about your numbers, what's going on, profit loss, you know, where accounts receivable, et cetera. And people get up for a break. And this guy gets up, takes off his jacket, rolls up his sleeves, and begins to put things away. Doesn't say a word. There's no expectation. He just gets to work. And what you see is everybody else follows suit. Now, they're not following suit, and this is important. They're not following suit because they're afraid they're going to get fired or something bad's going to happen. But they're watching him take action, inspired action, with something simple, right? Now, this, what, this guy happened to do it with big things, too. He sees a problem, he goes after it. He, atta he just goes right away and goes to work and doesn't have to make a lot of fanfare about it. And the people around him loved him for that. I mean, loved him as a person, as a human for that because he didn't say, hey, you know, uh, Doug, that's your job or Ryan, that's your job to clean this up. Why is it messy? He just saw something and went and did it and just took care of it. Yeah, yeah. And I think that... I could not, I could not agree more um, uh, with that because, you know, attitude reflects leadership, right? It was one of my favorite quotes from, from uh, remember the Titans, the movie. And, and you know, if, if you spend Great enough movie. time, I'm going to quote that a thousand times. Uh, I just love that movie. And, but that's exactly right. People watch your actions way more than they watch your words. Right. And so there, there's a difference in saying, I need you to go do this task. I want you to go do this task versus showing them when they step into the organization, showing them that this is how we do that task and giving them a really clear education of what that looks like. And then 
once that task is given, given to them, supporting them with firmness, love, grace, understanding, teaching, those types of things, rather than them walking in the door, having no idea what it is to work for you and say, these are the things I need you to do because I don't want to deal with them. Like, okay, <laughs> we're an organization where we put things on people when we don't want to deal with them. Got it. That's, that's the culture that we have. And so I, you know, for the leaders that are listening to this, when you, when you take a look at your organization, if you feel that your employees aren't giving you the best, or if they're lazy, or if they're always trying to get one over on you, or you're constantly in a turnover mode, I think it might be time to really look in the mirror and take an evaluation of yourself and how you're leading. And if you have a big company, how are you leading? How are your leaders leading? And how are your managers leading your people? I think it, it always starts from the top and trickles down. Always. And this also goes at home, guys. So everything we're talking about, Ryan's saying here about business, we're going to keep on the business uh, thread here. But I also want some of you guys, because I know some of you that are listening to this regularly, this directly applies to your home life as well. Um, and so, Ryan, when we're coming into this attraction leader that you're seeing here, uh, and transparently, we had this conversation within the leadership teams within the Powerful Man about uh, becoming a better leader, becoming a better communicator, you know, staying out of people's way, things of that nature. What are some other things that uh, somebody that is desiring to become an attraction leader and have attraction leadership, you know, what are some other things they can do? So when it comes to, especially when it comes to <clears throat> being at home, <sighs> I think that it's really important for you to, and guys, I know this, this took me a long time to accept and be okay with. It starts, starts everything in my opinion now starts with taking care of yourself, um, putting yourself first, um, as, as a leader in your business and at home, when, when you are sacrificing yourself, for others at the detriment of yourself that puts a lot of pressure on the other people in your life that was something that my wife communicated to me right she was, she said it feels like your happiness is fully dependent on me and ryan mm. that's a lot of pressure and i was just like holy you know i didn't see it that way but it was right ali can i go work out Allie, I want to go out with friends. Is it okay if I do that? Allie, this, Allie, that. She's like, I don't stop asking me things. It is important for you to take care of yourself. Book those things into your schedule and just go do them. And so, guys, if you want to lead others well, it starts with leading yourself really well. 100%, right? You need to be the, you know, to be, to quote over, <laughs> overuse one, but be the change and be that person first with yourself, you know, whether it be in the business or at home to do it. So an example we talk about, or when I see it, when I think of leaders, you know, we talk about the first to show up, the last to leave, you know, that's one thing. If that's the example you're trying to set, another example could be, Hey, just get it done. It might take you eight hours, might take you an hour. I don't care. Right. I'm looking for results, not time going through there. And a lot of that comes down to, as you said, Ryan, communicating expectations, communicating standards, which also comes down to just communicating, you know, really takes as a leader in your business or anywhere else. It only takes another few seconds to take a pause and come in and say something really nice. Like nobody wants to be told what to do without a why, why am I doing this or felt like they're an employee or just a task rabbit. Nobody wants to feel that way. That's right. And we've talked about this before, um, but you know, everybody has an emotional bank account, mm -hmm. right? And you have got to be making deposits into that before you ever go to try to make a withdrawal. Yeah. And that's something as a leader, you really have to monitor. Like you have to know, like, if I've been, if I've been riding Doug really hard for the last couple of weeks, um, he's showing great improvement, but, but today, you know, he, he missed the mark today. Hmm. I need to make sure that Doug and I are in a good place that Doug knows that I value him before I go to criticize him. 
because criticism is great, right? Constructive criticism is incredibly important. But if you come at them and they just, they feel beat up and beat down that they can't do anything right. And you go to let them know the next thing that they're not doing right. Eventually, like no one wants to feel that way all the time. So eventually they're going to really despise you, your organization, and they're going to leave. Um, and that happens at home too, right? Like if your wife feels again, that nothing she does is ever enough, eventually she's going to get fed up and be like, yep, it's me. I'm broken. Or he's a jerk. He's broken. This, this isn't working. And so being really mindful of, okay, where are we right now? Where, what is the temperature of this relationship? I want to make sure that you know, you're valued first. And then let's have those those critical conversations. Yeah, I think, and again, this applies right to home, right? As you said, and we look at, you know, leadership in business. One of the lessons I've learned running businesses for over 20 years is that nobody deliberately screws up, right? And if you have someone on your team that deliberately screws up, that's your fault for hiring that person, right? Exactly. Uh, that's all there is to it. But nobody sets out to screw up. And if you have that paradigm in your head of, you know, that, this person made a mistake, it's a mistake, right? And then you want to educate them. Now, now, there could be a personality thing that, you know, they just can't do the job function or what have you. You know, then you got to go back to your, the basics, right? Where's your hiring system? This person slipped through the cracks. But when we talked about being an attraction leader, people want to be inspired, right? Uh, they, they don't want you just to critique them. You know, it's good to get how you can do better, right? And ask them and get on, you know, honest feedback. And as a leader, you better be willing to accept honest feedback, well, right? Like, you better, right? Yeah. You better be willing to sit there and ask for stuff. So, you know, within the powerful man movement, you know, it's a movement of men, but we still have to operate in some ways like another organization or a, or a business would do it. And I think from the top down, I'll give, you know, Tim, a lot of credit here is Tim is constantly asking for feedback and ways that he can course correct because we're growing so fast. I mean, the movement of men that are coming on board and when men come on board and they transform their lives, they want to help other men. So the powerful man's growing so fast and Tim is constantly asking for feedback, right? You go from managing one person to 20 people to 50 to 100 to 300. That's a big difference of the leader you get to be. Um, and I see you shaking your head there. Absolutely. That's an example of attraction leadership is people seeing that, yeah, you've messed up as a leader, but you're willing to course correct. Okay. I can put up with that mess up. I can put up with the shortness. I can put up with whatever else there is because I know you're doing the best that you can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, case in point, last night now this is this is from my own relationship uh with my wife um but applies to business and, and across is last night was men's night uh we were gonna go out and be with the boys um and i ended up being gone exceptionally long yesterday and my wife was full on with the kids you know and if your wife is anything like mine she's been four or five months on with the kids so there's a lot of grace that needs to be extended in that regard. I walked in the door and I could just see it, you know, like she, she was like, don't leave me again. And I, so I immediately was just walked in the door and I said, I'm not going tonight. I'm just not, I'm not going. And she said, you can go. I said, I know I can, I'm not going. I can see it on you, I'm not going. And then I said, she goes, great. Well, our friends, they had invited us over. I just didn't want to tell you because I knew you were excited about this thing. And I said, boom, let's go. That sounds great. So getting ready. And my wife says, oh, her friend really just wants to go hang with the girls. Is it okay if she just goes out with the girls? Now I'm like, oh, you just, it was guys night. Now it's girls night. Are you serious? Uh, but instead of overreacting right and getting upset and throwing a temper tantrum and you know she's just not a good wife right they're just not a good employee right they're just screwing up like they always do i asked questions i asked very critical questions i was like and i and i explained how i felt i said okay i gotta be awesome a little hurt here because 
I gave up guys night to spend time with you to like fill your cup. And now you're leaving me with the kids to go do your own thing. Like that kind of sucks. She was then able to explain our friend is going through a really hard time. They just found out they had a miscarriage and her friend needed her friends last night. And it instantly, I gathered, right? Rather than flying off the handle, I gathered all of the information. I didn't lie about how I felt. I was upset. But the moment I had the truth switch, I was like, I'm full in. I've got the kids. You go spend time with her friend. When, when they're done tomorrow night, I'm going to go out. I'm going to, we're going to go drink a bourbon with this guy. And I'm going to like, let him know how much he is loved. And we are going to be the best friends to these people. And through all of that, I was able to manage my emotional state to understand that I didn't have the full picture. And by taking the time to ask questions and get the full picture, I was able to see like, oh yeah, my wife's human too. Saw her friend in need, didn't think about me because she didn't need to and just acted. And maybe I would have acted differently. Maybe I wouldn't have, but I, I was able to, lead us to that point where she felt really good about that decision last night. And I had one of the best nights with my kids that I've had in weeks. So for leaders, I think it's, it's really important to be able to see the bad situations and understand like, it's okay to be emotional, to be hurt, to be upset, to, to have these feelings. You don't have to push those down, but remember that you probably don't have the full story and let's go ask some questions everybody explain how they feel and then let's work to a solution that brings us closer together doesn't push us further apart absolutely i love that um i would have just left and gone out to guys night but (laughs) (laughs) you're a better man than i am um you know and and what it comes down to a lot of this guys uh, you know we'll wrap up here in a second um but it comes down to who is the leader that inspires you to be a better leader? Who's the leader that you're watching or you're reading about? You know, is it, you know, what is it that inspires you? And can you be that person, right? Can you be that person in your own organization? And look at the the trends that you have, right? Are you snappy with your, your staff or at home? Or are you lazy? Are you waiting to horse trade, right? You do this for me and then I'll do it for you, right? Or are you the type of person that takes the bull by the horns and just gets it done? without expectation, without the need to be seen, the need for accolades, you know, and things of that nature. Where are you in your leadership journey? And, you know, who are those people that inspire you, you know, inspire, right? That's That's a definition of it. Who inspires you to take action and be the best that you could be? And are you being like that person? So, Ryan, let's wrap this up and give these guys a couple actionable steps that they could take today to move in this direction. Sure. So uh, I I think just what you're talking about, I think a first great step for them is to figure out what that, you know, model is for them, right? What does, what does being a great leader, who, who do you look up to? What are their attributes? Um, and so doing, doing that and guys, anytime you spend time with me, I'm going to tell you, you need to stop sit down and actually do this work. I know it sounds good and you'll, you'll be driving and you'll hear it in your head or you'll be in the gym and listen, I get it. I know I've walked away from really great podcasts and done nothing with the information too. I totally get it. But I'm telling you, take the 15 minutes and write out who that person or persons are and what are those attributes? Why do those stick out to you? And then figure out, am I hit? Do I feel like I'm hitting? at that level. And if I'm not, boom, I found my course correction. I figured out where I need to do some work. Love it, absolutely love it. So guys, like Ryan said, in the moment of any insight, take massive action here. Uh, Make sure you stop and do this. Leadership is so important we could do 100 podcasts on this. Ryan is the powerful man's expert in culture and innovation. He's really changed things around, so he's a wealth of information. Ryan, love to have you back on uh, for another show. We can talk more about this. Uh, Guys, as always, go over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash bonus to get a free training. That's thepowerfulman.com forward slash bonus and get your free training. And as Ryan said, take some action. Take action today and be that inspired leader that you know you can be. 
Guys, have an amazing day. Ryan, thanks again for being here. And we'll see you next time on The Powerful Man Show. 